Hey there, happy Sunday afternoon. This is our very first uh, Prophetic Art Connections class for uh, being at the church. But because of the whole thing about me getting uh, COVID, I'm gonna, we're doing this on the Zoom. So hopefully uh, this is gonna work well for everybody. Um, let me see if I can fix this where it, or I can, I'm not sure how we're gonna do. Okay, well, I, I went ahead and put it back this way so I can see see both of us here. Um, so uh, hopefully whenever other people come on that I won't miss them and I'll uh, be sure and get them to join us. So uh, this is, let's just start out with a little prayer um, for opening up our class today. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you that you have brought us together in order to learn more about your prophetic art. So that everybody can begin to see and hear your voice and express it creatively. I de declare that there will be an activation for every person who comes on to this class, whether they're viewing it live or whether they're viewing it afterwards when it's a recording, that they will be inspired and encouraged and activated to begin to see and hear your voice clearly through their dreams, their visions, and their experiences. Experiences. We just thank you and praise you and give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, I um, wanted to just say thank you for joining us on this class. Um, it's going to be just kind of a basics thing where we're going to talk about what is prophetic art. And I don't have a whole lot of examples other than I have some scriptures and I uh, I do have a few pictures here that I want to uh, share. So um, this, uh, and now the, also I was going to show you, uh, I use this book. This is a book that I wrote. It's called Enigma, God's Voice in Prophetic Art. And uh, it talks about uh, what prophetic art is and how you can do prophetic art. It goes through 21 different secret decoding devices or 21 chapters. And it's just giving, like, giving you different ideas of things that, uh, how you can begin to understand what God is saying to you as you look at your dreams and visions. And so basically what you, what you do to begin to hear the voice of the Lord, when you have a dream or you have a vision or an experience that you just know God did this, what you'll do is you'll write this down and uh, you'll tell everything you can about it. Now, you can have, it doesn't have to be a fancy kind of journal or anything. I mean, you can just get one, like one of these or like a three ring binder or you could have a spiral notebook. But have it to where it's handy and uh, you use that for your notes during the class. And then if you have a dream or a vision or an experience, just write it down inside of there. And uh, you can make little sketches along the side. I haven't got too many sketches or anything along this one. Uh, I had, uh, I got bunches of these. But um, put the date on there when you begin. And uh, anytime you have a dream or a vision or experience and you write about it, be sure you put the date on there. And uh, we're, we're, the thing we're going to talk about, how you do it, is you think about your senses that you have. You, there's, I say there's 10 senses. You have five natural and you have five supernatural. So it's like, <clears throat> what do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? What do you smell? And what do you taste? And then there's that sixth sense, that thing that you just know because you know you were in your grandpa's backyard and Uncle Joe was there and it was the 4th of July, whatever it could be. But you want to make note of like if there's colors, sometimes predominant colors mean something. Uh, every color has a meaning. And if there's any numbers or words, write those down. And then you begin to ask the Lord, what are you trying to say to me, Lord? And then you obey whatever he tells you to do. He might have you look up the meaning of a word or a scripture, or there might be a number in his, it's, okay, now look this up and try to find this scripture. And then God will begin to unfold even more meaning behind that. So uh, it just is ongoing. And so if you put, if you put down the date in there, 
you can uh, you can always go back to that. And it's interesting how God will remind you of things uh, that you dreamed about or you had a vision about. And uh, he'll go back and show you how it's coming to pass. Or maybe it's something that already happened, you know. But um, as you do the research, it unfolds more and more meaning. And so you just continue to ask the Lord, what are you trying to say to me about this? And uh, sometimes it might not be much information at that time. But then as, as time goes on, he'll remind you of it and you'll find out more and more and more about what he's trying to say to you. So uh, it, it can be very exciting um, as you look back on what God is saying to you through different dreams and visions. And I want to encourage you uh, to be thinking about dreams and visions that you might have already had and write them down. Write them down in your, uh, in your journal. Uh, just uh, make a list of them, you know, and try to remember as much as you can about them. And if you have an image for them, make a little sketch for them. And then uh, go on and uh, if you remember the date or around the date, you can put that in there. It doesn't have to be exact, but that just kind of helps you to see, oh my gosh, God's been speaking to me all of this time. Well, when I first learned about prophetic art, it was in 2006, and I had never heard of prophetic art. I didn't know what it was, although I'd been an artist all of my life, and I'd had dreams and visions, but I never once thought to draw it or even write it down. I remember telling them over and over and over again. I was a children's minister for like 35 years, and... Um, God had given me lots of different dreams and visions that I knew it was God. And I wasn't quite sure what all it meant, you know. But I remember telling those stories over and over again and sharing them. And the Lord said, okay, those stories that you have been remembering, make a note of those and draw them. You know, I ended up with about 30 pictures. I couldn't hardly believe it. I had that many of those dreams and visions that had been swimming around in my head all of those years that I had referred back to, God had reminded me of. And um, I, there was one that, that keeps coming back to my mind now as I'm talking to you. Uh, and it was um, where I saw um, the way the church was. The church was in one part, you know, the main sanctuary was here. And then down the hall and then upstairs, was where um, the children's church was. Well, in my dream, I saw a little spark of fire that started right up there in the children's church. And that little spark of fire began to go down the hallway. And then when it got to the sanctuary, it burst into flame. And it was like the Lord was saying, the fire of the Holy Spirit is maybe just like a spark with the children but it is going to set the church on fire. So I, you know, I just, that I've always been a believer that God speaks through children and he really wants to um, use children in a supernatural way in ministry. So um, that was one of the first ones that I drew because it had been shown to me over and over and over again. So if you have something like that, get your journal and uh, you might have a sketchbook. Uh, it doesn't have to be big. I've got one like this. Uh, this is like about five by seven. Or here's one that's uh, about eight by 10. Maybe it's 11 by 14. I'm not quite, that's not quite 11 by 14. I'm not sure what that is. But anyway, uh, here's one that you know I drew. And then I put some color to it with just some uh, markers. And then what I like to do is on the back. Hey, it's been crazy here. Look at this. I write what it means. See that? <laughs> I wrote on the back all the different meanings that this had to me and what God had spoken to me. And what you can do is you can do the same thing. Um, and you can go back to it. Now, I did end up painting this. And um, on the back of the painting, I write some things on there as well. But this was like, uh, let's see, 7 10 2019. And I don't think I painted it until last year 2020 
So um, yeah, so you can do that. You don't have to have a, um, you don't have to have a special journal. You don't have to have a special sketchbook. You can just take paper. This is like, um, this is just a copy paper and I just cut it in half. And uh, that's actually how the Lord had me begin to start doing what I call vision sketches. <clears throat> I was going to the church called Daystar and we did what was called a prophetic night. And uh, we would, um, there'd be anywhere from two to four people in a room. And every 15 minutes, a person would come in and we would ask the Lord to give us the prophetic word for them. One that was encouraging to them, that was edifying, exhorting, and comforting. And I, when I first started, I thought, oh, Lord, I can, if I can do this, you know, I just, can you give me something, you know? I remember the whole way over there, I would say, oh, Lord, please give me something. I don't know with these people, you know, but I know you know them. Well, Whenever I got there and I started in the room with them, it's like, oh my goodness, there was a flood of information. God just started giving me all these pictures and these words. And I'm thinking, what? I, I, we have to take turns, you know, I don't want to take over and speak over everybody else. You know, I wanted to give everybody else a chance to be able to share. Well, so the Lord said, just take a piece of paper, cut it in half. And bring it with you. And I'd have we'd have eight people that we'd see each night. So I had eight of these um, that, that I would have each night. And I would just draw whatever the Lord told me, or uh, if He showed me a scripture or words or whatever, I would write that down. And uh, then whenever it came my turn, I was able to speak it pretty quickly. And uh, it wasn't until like the second or third time, and uh, the lady said, "Well." Can I have that? And I said, sure, because I was just wondering, what am I going to do with this, you know? And she was delighted. So uh, I gave her what I call now the vision sketch. And since then, that's been several years ago, I have come in contact with people that uh, I had given a vision sketch two years ago, and they still carry it in their, their Bible or they have it in their office or something like that. I've had different ones send me a picture to say, this is what you drew for me. And some of them I remember and some of them I don't, you know. So uh, it can be a little remembrance that you can leave with somebody. And I, this is what I want to encourage everybody in this class to begin to do, is to be ready to hear from the Lord an encouraging word to give to somebody else. And it's, a, it's called a prophetic word, but uh, it, it's to bring comfort and encouragement and uplifting to them. So um, as you do this, as you do this class, as you uh, go along your way at, in church or uh, in your everyday time, just ask the Lord, um, do you have a special word that you have for me to give to somebody today? And just be ready that uh, if he gives you something, um, you know, draw it, you know, write it down. And, and then let me show you one that I did the other, this has been a, a couple of weeks ago, I guess that I did this. Uh, this one was for a friend. And, um, and as I was talking to them, the Lord just showed me this and, uh, I just sketched it and I told them about it. And, um, uh, and then the Lord just, um, he just used it for them for that moment, you know? So, uh, you, you can, you can do it, um, on purpose or you can just be waiting and say, okay, God, we've got something for me. I mean, I've got a friend who he would always pray every day and ask the Lord to give him some kind of a word of encouragement for somebody. And he would have a whole satchel full of vision sketches, you know, just he'd have them in his, in his little um, satchel, I guess it's called. And, um, and when he would be walking down the road or whatever, and he, the Lord would say, you see that person right there? Remember that drawing I gave you? I want you to go give that to them. And this is for them. And uh, he would do that. And he said it's phenomenal because many times it was, it was like, you know, he didn't know them at all. But yet God gave them, gave him something that was an encouragement to them. He knew all about them. In fact, he gave one to me. He had never met me. And um, 
that and actually it's it's one that is in in my book uh, let me see if i can find it here uh it was it was real brief but it was it showed uh my hand was on fire and i was going to a higher uh position let me see if i can get rid of this right here i'm not sure why that's in there oh goodness Uh, I don't know why this is in there. Okay. I've got something that's popped up on my screen now. I had to get rid of it. Well, let's see if I can push this right here. Okay, there we go. So anyway, um, uh, it, it's in here. Oh, here it is. I don't know if you can see it, but it's real small. And that was the vision sketch that he gave for me where uh, my hand was on fire and I was going to higher places. And uh, that I, I was, it was because of my drawing uh, that God was going to take me to higher places. And he definitely has since then. I had, this was, this was in 2010, November of 2010. So uh, God will do that for you. He'll encourage you and give you things that will keep you going. <clears throat> so um, what is prophetic art? Prophetic art is um, drawing your dreams and visions and, ex and your experiences and expressing it creatively. Now, um, I, I like to draw, but then uh, other people, now what we're doing in this class is we're going to be drawing, we're going to be write, journaling or writing about what we dream, have a vision about. Uh, um, and, but then, there's other people who have other gifts that they might take that drawing and move on and they would possibly make a song or maybe a dance or they might write, write a book. Uh, there's a lot of creative expressions, um, a dance or a flag. So, you know, people do flags and they do dance. Um, you can, as God speaks to you, he might begin to give you a different way to express it beyond what you write down in your journal or what you draw. So um, I want to encourage each of you. We all have different gifts. We have different talents and expressions, different ways to express that. So um, uh, I want you to be ready to share those things with me as the Lord begins to show you things. So I don't want to go too much longer here, but um, one thing I wanted to do was um, we've talked about vision sketches. We've talked about our six senses, uh, our 10 senses, five natural and five supernatural. And then that sixth sense, which is the thing that you know, because you know. And um, the other thing is, um, okay, my quest for you in church when you come to church, I want you to bring your journal, sketchbook if you want, and begin to take notes. Now, you might not always get something, but then again, you might. I remember many times when I was just there in worship, I like to do flags. I used to worship with flags. I don't know if you've ever done that. But um, I remember many, many, many times when I would be just worshiping and praying in my prayer language and worshiping and God would begin to give me a vision and I would go and I would sit down and I would sketch it in my journal or in my sketch pad and write down whatever I remembered and then several times it was something that the pastor was speaking about in the sermon that day that I didn't have any idea so you see the Holy Spirit is beginning to show you how you begin to get in tune with him, get onto his frequency. So what you want to do is you want to ask the Lord <clears throat> to forgive you of all your sins. Of course, we want you to be a Christian, to be, have Jesus in your heart. It's so important that you have Jesus in your heart and um, be walking as a Christian and walking in forgiveness and asking the Lord to um, forgive you and help you to forgive those who have sinned against you. And then as you do that, then you ask the Lord to um, give you words, give you things that's going to uh, uh, speak to your heart. It might be something for you, 
or it might be something for somebody else. What I see most of the time, the way God speaks to me, he speaks to me first. But then as I look at it, I realize, oh my goodness, it's not just for me. It's for everybody else. It's for other people. Sometimes it might be for a specific person, but most of the time it's for me. And then it's for others that we can, we can use that for. So what I want to encourage you to do is as you're in service, in the church service, I want you to write down, you know, they, they usually give you a little bulletin. I know in our church, we, they do. Um, it has uh, an outline of, of the questions, you know, that, that he's going to ask, and then he'll have them up on the, on the board as well. And so I, I, what I did today is I did not have my, uh, the, I was in a church. So I, what I did is I wrote down the notes uh, as he spoke. It was called The Lion Hunter. And uh, I just wrote notes as, as he was speaking. And I didn't really see any, any pictures. Although, as I'm thinking now, I'm thinking of some that it could be because he spoke about the lion that had the lamb in his mouth and the shepherd was pulling the, the lamb out of his mouth. You know, that could be an, an image that you could draw. And you could say, okay, this is, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a shepherd. I'm going to help to bring, you know, pull the lion, the lambs that are being caught from the lion, I'm going to help to pull them out of the mouth of the lion and, and save them. So that's an image that you can maybe uh, draw from this morning. So each Sunday, I want you to, I want to encourage you to be asking the Lord, what are you speaking to me today? What are you wanting to be, to see? And uh, if you have an image of some kind, you sketch it. Or if you have words that come about, you know, write that down <clears throat> and then be ready to share it. Now, if you have something from today, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Uh, but I want you to uh, remember to do this each Sunday. We're gonna, we've got eight weeks. Now, uh, the next next Sunday, we will have to be doing the uh, Zoom class in the Zoom again because I'm still going to be under quarantine. Uh, I still do have COVID. Uh, and I'm considered contagious until after that. So, uh, so uh, even this Sunday and next Sunday, we will be doing this class on Sunday afternoon via Zoom. Uh, and we'll, we'll have to wait and see about the next class. But the uh, August the uh, 1st and the 2nd, um, we, I will be out of town. So we won't have any class on those two days. So, uh, but up until then, you can still go ahead and take your journal and make your notes and then show us the next week. Uh, just be ready and be expectant when you go into the service saying, Lord, I know you've got something special for me. And just be ready to draw and write whatever it is <clears throat> that he's speaking to you for that out of that sermon today. Uh, so, um, and let's see here, what's the other one thing that I was thinking about here? So if you, uh, let me just share this scripture here uh, with you. This is in uh, 1 Corinthians 14. Let me see if I can find it on here. 1 Corinthians 14, 3 through 5. And I like to read it out of the Amplified. Uh, okay. All right. 1 Corinthians 14, starting at 3. Okay, and this is in the Amplified. Now, this talks about what it is to prophesy, how it's to edify, exhort, and comfort. All right, and this is, and I'm going on down to the end of five because it talks about the importance of prophecy, okay, and speaking in tongues. All right, but on the other hand, the one, okay, for one who speaks, all right, now I'm going to start at two. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people, but to God. That's an important point. You're speaking to God when you speak in tongues. For no one understands him or catches his meaning, but the spirit, he speaks mysteries, secret truths, hidden things. See, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you as you pray in that prayer language. He's speaking mysteries into your spirit. It's awesome. And three says, but on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for edification, which is to promote their spiritual growth 
and speaks words of encouragement that, that lifts you up to uphold and advise them concerning the matters of God <clears throat> and speaks words of consolation to compassionately comfort them. So that's edify, exhort, and comfort you. All right, let's see here. And four says, one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. So speaking in tongues will build up your spirit man, which is a good thing to do. You know, singing in your prayer language, uh, during worship, sing in your prayer language or just speak in your prayer language and it builds up your spirit. It says, one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but one who prophesies edifies the church, promotes growth in spiritual wisdom, devotion, holiness, and joy. Now, I wish that all of you spoke in unknown tongues, but even more, I wish that you would prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater and more useful than the one who speaks in tongues unless he translates or explains what he said so that the church may be edified, instructed, improved, and strengthened. So when you prophesy, you're speaking words in the language that people can understand. When you're speaking in tongues, people don't normally, they don't understand what you're saying. But if you have the interpretation of that, which is a prophetic word, God gives life to those who hear and they're encouraged, says what they have joy, they have holiness, uh, they, or they're given wisdom and devotion and, uh, into the ways of God. So uh, that's why we want to prophesy. That's why we want to do vision sketches, you know, and, and uh, create pictures for people that they can begin to have hope in their life and encouragement for what God has for them. All right, and so let's see here. The other one is, um, let's see here, just a second here. I thought I had another scripture here. Well, I guess that's it. So these are, these are some questions I want you to be thinking about. Okay, here it is. Acts 19, 2 through 6. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they began to speak in unknown tongues and prophesy. So I'm just praying and believing that today, if you have not been, uh, you have not received the Holy Spirit since you believe, we're going to, by the Spirit, we're going to lay our hands on you, declare that you are going to be touched by the Holy Spirit, you're going to be filled with the Spirit, you're going to have the evidence of speaking in tongues, and you will be able to begin to prophesy in the name of Jesus and be able to bless and encourage the church body. So these are some questions I want you to think about. Okay, have you been, have you been filled since you believed? I want you to tell me about that, how that happened, and has it changed? How has it changed your life? It's absolutely turned my life upside down. Totally different than what my life was before. I have hope like I never had before. Two, what is a dream or a vision that you have had that you know was a message from God? Think about that. If you have had one, then just write it down and remember as much as you can and tell about it. And if you want to share about it, we'll talk about it in just a minute. And um, then three is, which of your senses was most stimulated? Did you see something? Did you hear something? Did you feel something? Did you smell something? Or did you taste something? For me, most of the time, I don't smell or, or, or taste, but I feel things and I see things and I hear things. And especially if I hear something, I think, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Whether it's a number or a name or a word, I write that down because then I'm asking the Lord afterwards, what do you say? You say, what are you trying to say to me, Lord? So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm going to turn off the recording and we're going to uh, see if we can talk with some of the folks uh, a little bit more who's online. All right, let's see here. 
All right. God bless you. See you later. Bye.